Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. Today's video is divided into six parts. So make sure to see the text somewhere on the screen so you know exactly which part you're going to be watching. This video is going to be super duper duper interesting because it's about gaming. I've always loved playing racing games. I mean, come on, who amongst us does not like gaming or racing and who hasn't played Midtown Madness? I'm sure almost all of us have at one point of time. Ouch. <laughs> But with time and age, the games reduce drastically. Sad. By the way, I'm a huge Formula 1 fan. When I was in school, I used to play F1 on the computer with A being for accelerator and Z being for braking. Yes, on a keyboard. In fact, a new Formula 1 game used to come every 5-8 years. Yeah, that was a long, long, long wait for a new Formula 1 game. Thankfully, someone in Hungary used to update the game every year with new drivers. The language was Hungarian, but I had to do with whatever I could understand because language was definitely a barrier. The state of gaming was really poor, at least for Formula 1 fans like me. With time, I got myself an Xbox as well and started to play Forza. Oh my god, so much fun. And then thanks to Drive to Survive, Formula 1 became so popular that there's a new Formula 1 game every freaking year. So during COVID, I also got myself a Sony PlayStation 5. Oh my God, the good life. I thought I was a gamer, but not really because I still did not have a wheel and my eyes were set on getting a simulator setup. But it really didn't happen. I'll tell you why. Simply because there was no urgency and I did not have any free time for fun and games, which actually made me a dull boy. Then in May 2023, I went to Italy to visit Ferrari and experience the Thrustmaster sim setup. I was sold. I realized what I was missing out on and decided that I need to get a simulator in my house. Logitech turns out to be too basic, so I thought I'll get Thrustmasters instead. But Thrustmasters has no service support in India, so I was kind of baffled what to do next. But one thing I was sure of, that I'm going to be using a PlayStation 5. Yes, a PS5 to power the games. And then I came across, oh my god, I'm going to sing somewhere here. Then I came across Virtual Racing Hub. And they told me, Using a PS5 is a bad decision. I Instead, you need a PC if you really want to have high level graphics. We'll come to that in a bit. And they also do turnkey setups, which they have actually done for me by assembling the hardware and software right at my doorstep. So when I spoke to Akshat from Virtual Racing Hub, he actually explained to me why PC is the real deal for gaming. And it was a little difficult for me to understand because I hate Microsoft and I hate Windows and I don't use any of the products from Windows or Microsoft. Even I don't use Word or anything of that sort. Apple. 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 But that's not the point of this video right now. He told me, and it was a little harsh, the words which he used. He said, gaming consoles are for amateurs. Ouch. Give me the address. He even invited me to his farmhouse somewhere in Gurgaon. I don't know, I got lost there. Well, fine then. Wherein I got a chance to try his rupees 15 lakh simulator. Oh my God, it was absolutely amazing. I really enjoyed it. That's expensive. But then I embarrassed myself by not being able to last more than two corners using the VR headset because it was just way too much for me to handle. And then you might be wondering that, why am I sitting in the Jimny? Why am I driving the Jimny? Because this car is no less than a toy. It is so much fun. Enough of this bakchodi, let's head to the simulator! So after a ton of research, I finally got myself a simulator setup in my bedroom. Yeah, I sleep next to it. Okay, let's dwell into the hardware. There are seven main components of this setup and I have sourced them from Virtual Racing Hub which is the sole distributor for Moza Racing in India. The first one is this rig and it is the heart of this setup. Known as the VRH1 aluminium cockpit, it's made of high strength aluminium to ensure there is no flex while playing. Since it's modular, it offers the flexibility of mounting other accessories at any position of your choice. It gets this sporty bucket racing seat and you can slide it ahead or behind as per your height. It also reclines. It's also compatible with all popular force feet feedback wheels and pedals. Which brings me to the second component of this setup and also the most important one, the wheel and pedals. I have opted for the Moza Racing R5 bundle which consists of the wheel, pedals and the motor which is also called the base. 
It's a direct drive system with aviation grade aluminum alloy construction for durability and endurance. To ensure accuracy and true to life feel, the motor encoder supports 15 bit ultra high resolution. Now I know that's a lot of technical jargon right there, but long story short, the bits denote the range of values. Higher the bit, the more range of modulation, the better the gaming experience. It has a very good heatsink design which prevents the motor from heating even when you play for long. And I play for hours and hours and haven't faced any heating issues whatsoever. Touch wood. The most important thing for me personally is the steering wheel. This is the ES steering wheel which has an aluminium alloy frame with coating of handmade stitched leather. It's a round wheel with a 12 inch diameter which is a similar size to a regular car for a more realistic driving experience. Grips are located at 3 and 9 o'clock positions and there is no stitching on the grips for maximizing sensation to the hands. It weighs just 1 kg and this light wheel helps reduce inertia for improved responsiveness. There are 22 fully customizable buttons on the wheel so that you can make adjustments on the go. This motor has an all aluminium quick release mount which lets you interchange the wheel within the Moza ecosystem. Since I plan to play F1 the most, I have got the ES Formula mod which has this 11 inch F1 style racing wheel. It's made of 4mm thick aviation grade lightweight aluminium alloy. The dimensions match that of a real Formula racing wheel for more realism. The wheel does come with this allen key so it's easy to swap. The grips are made of TPU rubber for durability. They are non-slip, sweat-proof and feel quite premium. And the third thing in the Moza R5 racing bundle are the SRP light pedals which are made of high strength steel for rock solid durability. You can obviously customize the position and spacing of the pedals as per your needs. The pedals use a high precision position hall sensor which ensures maximum stability and durability allowing for consistency and performance. Now what is this hall sensor you ask? It's a sensor that gives an input value depending on the amount of travel and this hall sensor converts this travel into a computer input which the game can sense. There is a Moza Pit House software app wherein you can fully customize the pedals and wheel to preset modes for GT, performance cars, Formula 1, rallying, karting, drifting, etc. It also gets a cloud-based app which lets you make changes to the base, steering and pedals through your phone. It's available both for iOS and Android and is simply called Moza Racing. Besides Formula 1, I'm going to play a lot of Forza 2 and since I'm a sucker for manual transmission and a proper handbrake, I decided to get the Moza Racing Edge Pattern, Edge GP Shifter and Handbrake, both of which are CNC machined from anodized aviation grade aluminium. This is a 7-speed gearbox with one reverse which along with 7 gear are locked for accidental selection. You have to apply downward pressure to engage these two gears. Both the gear shifter and handbrake use a non-contact high precision angle sensor ensuring positive and precise shifting and a long maintenance free life. I already told you how the sensor works but what is this non-contact thing you may ask? Basically there are no moving or contact based parts in the hall sensors so they don't wear out like potentiometers in the Thrustmaster or Logitech gear. You can mount the handbrake either vertically or horizontally to simulate both road and race cars. To run the games, I got a custom PC as that offers higher graphics than any gaming console can. And I can obviously update the hardware whenever I feel the need. And of course, a display. This is a 38.5 inch curved gaming monitor which has a refresh rate of 170Hz and a resolution of 1440p. A 4K setup would definitely be better but it's going to be a lot more expensive and would require a higher graphics card to make it work. So obviously I went cheap here and just cut costs. Anyways, you can also offer 3 screens for a wider setup but that seemed a bit too much to me. So why did I choose Moza over Logitech or Thrustmaster? Reason number one, Logitech wheels offer 2 Nm of torque for force feedback and Thrustmaster wheels offer 4 Nm. Meanwhile, this Moza wheel offers 5.5 Nm. Moza uses 15 bit while the other two wheels use 5 bit so range of modulation is quite low in those. Reason number two, Logitech wheels use belt drive while Thrustmaster wheels use gear drive. These aren't as efficient as high frequency force feedback detail are absorbed by the belt or gears and 60% of the torque is damped due to transmission loss of the moving parts. This makes the actual force feedback significantly less than the values claimed by the manufacturers, resulting in less driving information being conveyed. Meanwhile, Moza wheels use a direct drive system which is essentially a steering wheel mounted directly to a motor. This means that the user can experience the full force feedback of that electric motor. As there are fewer components involved, 
This greatly increases the immersion of the sim racing experience. The wheel is connected directly to the motor shaft, eliminating any gears or belts that can interfere with the force feedback, leading to more detail, strength and compatibility. Direct drive racing wheels are the most high-end and realistic sim racing wheels in the market. With less mechanical interference due to their internal design, Direct design wheels provide a much more involved driving experience with stronger and smoother force feedback. Reason number 3. Logitech and Thrustmaster wheels rotate between 900 to 1080 degrees while the Moza wheel has an unlimited rotation. In short, the Moza wheel is far superior as it doesn't have inconsistent feedback feel and outdated technology offered by Logitech and Thrustmaster. They also don't get quick release or interchangeable wheel support within ecosystem and use all plastic parts which aren't robust or durable. Local warranty isn't offered either, while Virtual Racing Hub, which is the India distributor of Moza Racing, gives you a good warranty. When you end up driving a sports car like you're driving an SUV, I mean, it's obviously a lot of fun, especially the wheel gives you such great feel and feedback now that you can point the car wherever you want and it actually goes. The kind of precision you can have with the wheel is just amazing and the kind of force feedback here blows your mind. <laughs> and I just banged some car there. 250 points for drifting, which is kind of a crash here. I know I'm driving a Red Bull but I'm actually wearing Ferrari shoes, Ferrari t-shirt and a Ferrari cap and this particular Ferrari cap has actually been signed by Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc as well. Yeah, I met both these drivers earlier this year. However, I'm not going to drive the Ferrari. Ferrari is so slow. I mean, it's like a tractor. Why should I drive a tractor when I can drive a championship winning car like this Red Bull which is super duper awesome in terms of the sound, in terms of the feel, feedback, everything and that's also courtesy of the setup which I have here. Really very rich in terms of feedback as well but this track is just amazing to drive on. This is the Saudi Arabia track. Then whenever I feel a little down, now nah, I'm just going to turn on the simulator and play Formula 1. Mostly I'm going to go to Baku or maybe even Spa because that's my favorite track. To sum it up, I am very happy with this setup. Quite realistic, super fun and of extremely high quality. If you like this vlog, make sure to give the thumbs up, that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel. I will go for a flying lap right away on my favorite track.